how to use synths in Logic Pro X. I promise to you, um, by the end of this video, you should have a stronger understanding of all the free stock synth instruments inside Logic, how to use all the presets, and then how to actually customize the you know, popular features, uh, the popular dials inside a synth to get the right sound you're looking for. We're going to be only using the free stock in synth instruments in this video and not any paid synths. So you'll have all this available in your Logic Pro X session um, so you can follow along. How I wanna break down this video is section one, I wanna talk about like where the synths are and how many synths Logic gives us. The second section is how do I use the stock presets available to get up and running very quickly? And then the third section is how do I customize the synths even past the preset to get the right sound I'm looking for for my track? First section, let's dive into where the synths are actually located inside Logic and how many does Logic offer us for free? We're going to, instead of usually adding an audio track, which I'm doing, I'm going to add a software instrument. And um, right here, we can actually choose the synth available to us. But if you don't, um, if you don't know, we just add any old basic software instrument. And we can change it later. But if you're actually looking to dive in right away, you can see this is your typical list layout of all the instruments that Logic gives you for free. And so we have the ES2 synthesizer available to us, and we have all of these other instruments available to us as well. So you can see it's a lot. And inside each of these instruments are tons of other instruments and presets available to us, Alchemy being an enormous one. Um, and then we'll get through that. So let's just chain, let's, for now, let's just um, go with this default ES2 synthesizer and create that channel. So it's gonna pull up this instrument channel here, our inspector window, and then the library. So at any time we could change our synth instrument track by going to this window where it says ES2 and clicking on the right, and that will bring this the same drop down window again. And here we can go and click different synths. So I'll show you, I'll give you a brief example of what every synth looks like very quickly. Alchemy is the most popular, well, synth because of, I would say it's the most popular, I think, because of all their preset instruments inside. You can ch filter by category, subcategory, genre, and the timbre. I don't even know how to say that word, actually. If you're looking for a bass sound, that a sub bass sound in the pop genre that's dark, here we have 22 presets for you. And so these are all synth sounds. You click on one and you start playing right away. So we can continue looking at uh, different synths. We have a drum synth, we have an FM synth, an ensemble synth, monophonic synth, a polyphonic synth, uh, the ES1, ES2, the Evoc, the quick sampler, the retro synth, the mod multi sample, the modeling synth. So you get the idea. There are a lot of synths, and you choose any of these synthesizers, open it up, and then you have the availability to choose the different presets. Every synth in Logic has presets, so don't feel overwhelmed that you need to actually know how to use a synth right away. Um, you can first start with the presets, and then you can get to know how the presets sound. So that's where the synths are located in Logic. Just go to this little box here and click any other synth you'd like, or you can go at the top here like we started, new tracks and then choose, the, it's, it's the same thing. Let's look at the second section of this video is to diving in deeper onto the presets of every synth. And we're not gonna dive into every synth because that would take forever, but we're gonna look at the popular ones and the, the presets on those. So we've already looked at Alchemy, so I'm not gonna do that one. Let's take a look at one synth I really like, which is the Retro Synth. So let's pull up this Retro Synth, and here's your typical kind of like, warm brass Juno sounds that you might have heard in the 80s. And so if you're looking at this right away and you don't know what to do, don't worry. This second section is just talking about the presets. So basically you would pull up a synth and then go to the drop down here at the top. And then you would have um, d in different categories, leads, pads, bass, strings, keyboards, and then their respective presets here. So if we want a kind of synth brass 
a mellow brass, then it's changed the dials for us to what a mellow brass synth would sound like. And I can go to my MIDI keyboard and now play these sounds. And so if we don't like that, we can go on this left and right arrow here and then click through the presets and choose one we end up liking. The same goes for every other instrument. If we don't, if we want to switch from the retro synth and go to the monophonic synth, maybe we want just a nice bass synth. Here we have the monophonic synth, and then we will go to the factory default drop down. The same thing we did in the retro synth, and just choose any preset here. So less presets in the monophonic synth, but still some bass bleed. And then same thing goes for every other synth. So the ES2, kind of a crazy looking synth, but lots of presets available to us. And you'll notice every time we bring up a preset by clicking right, all the dials change. And that's how you'll begin to understand what the heck is happening with the synthesizer. That's a good segue into this third section of the video is what are the popular dials to kind of shift and change inside a synth to get that sound you're looking for. Let's open up the retro synth. So let's go track, uh, new track, and then we'll go to the retro synth. So I'm gonna open up the retro synth and I'm going to look at this cutoff length here where I can click on this and go up and down and you can see what it's doing to the signal. And then I'm going to look at these filter envelopes and the amp envelope. And so there is this um, parameter here where I'm going to change the attack on the envelope. And then in the amp envelope, I'm going to also, I can change the attack. Let's start with a preset. So I'm going to go to the uh, mellow brass. That's a C major. And as I increase the cutoff, as I move that to the right, you can really hear the difference in, in the sound. So that's the same chord, and then I brew the cutoff to the, the left. You can barely hear it anymore. So I might wanna, I might want, you know, depend, you're gonna have to find the right sound, but you get the idea that the cutoff will drastically change how powerful your synth will sound. The resonance, it will move this up and down, this little dot here. And that's gonna make it sound like, like, well, it will add resonance. And so you'll hear what this sounds like. So that's what that sounds like with lots of resonance, and without any, with. The attack parameter is also another great way to change how a synth sounds, both on the filter and on the, the amp. So if we go uh, quick attack on, on the envelopes, we can see what that sounds like. Super in your face and very fast, right? It's very fast attack, that means low attack. If we increase the attack, you'll noticeably see the difference right away. If we don't want any resonance, go lower cutoff, but we want also a longer release. So that's like how actually how long that um, that amp envelope will last for. So you'll you'll hear the difference right now. Right? And now if I if I put this attack all the way to zero, you'll hear a big difference. Do you notice the difference when I play this C major chord and I can almost hear the sound right away and it's lasting more or less consistent? As soon as I start bringing this up and play the same chord, it swoops in. So you can kind of think of that filter um, attack being like a swoop or almost like a fade in in a way where it takes longer to actually happen. You can start working with this LFO filter and that will give you kind of this like rhythm. Um, well, we can see what that sounds like. Gives you that like 
rhythm effect to your your synth sound and that can be great if you're to add some rhythm and then you can also change the sign um, the shape of the 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 signal and these parameters are the same principles in other synths so you'll find the filter you'll find the cutoff you'll find the amp envelope like even more actually this why I start with the retro synth is because it seems to be very user friendly in a way where there's not it can it's not overwhelming like if we open up the the sculpture synth or the polyphonic synth you'll see the sculpture modeling synth there's way more going on here and that this can just be overwhelming at first for someone who doesn't know so but we still have cut off here we have our attack here we have more like frequencies we can change which are super with this very valuable um, the retro synth didn't have that but here we have our oscillators where we can actually change and look at the shape as we're playing it so if I Uh, this isn't these aren't even on but if I turn all the oscillators so so this synth gives you way more it's a modeling synth so it gives you basically every little thing you can change on a synth and if you're really into that then I would say this sculpture synth is the way to actually design a proper sound ask me any questions in the comments or any other videos that you'd like to see based around synths or logic specifically uh, music production feel free to listen to some of my own music and I hope to see you in the next video.